being bombed. I know you're aware of the reality on the ground when you list all of those cities where there is Russian bombardment right now, the Russians closing in. Uh, the Pentagon, uh, of course, here in the U.S., believes that about 95 percent of Russian troops that have been amassed along the Ukrainian border are now inside Ukraine. That would be nearly 150,000 troops. How long can the Ukrainian military, the Ukrainian people hold off the Russians? I'm sure that Ukrainians are prepared uh, to stand against Russia for their entire lives. Even the cities that were occupied by a Russian military, they have seen the response and feedback from ordinary people. These ordinary people didn't have machine guns. This courage is something that is unprecedented, and Russian soldiers don't even have uh, that courage. The problem is that for one soldier of Ukraine, we have 10 Russian soldiers, and for one Ukrainian tank, we have 50 Russian tanks, but we are destroying them, and this difference is that the gap is closing. But the question is, how long can we withstand many things depend not just on us. We will endure, and even if they come into all our cities, there will be insurgency, insurgent war, and no one will give away our independence. Today, war is here. Tomorrow, it will be in Lithuania, then in Poland, then in Germany. This is serious. United States is far away, but in recent days, I do feel that United States are closer to us. I know you spoke with President Biden again. I'm curious, what's the most important thing you're asking the president for, asking the U.S. for right now? I told him that for us, the most important today is the security in the sky. We cannot uh, allow Russia to be active there only because they're bombing us, they are shelling us, they are bombing us, they are sending m missiles, helicopters, jet fighters. So a lot of things, uh, but we are not doing this because we don't have the sky. We don't control our sky. The president and NATO have said no to this no-fly zone because of concerns this could trigger a much wider a conflict, a much a bigger war than what we're seeing uh, already because there would have to be a willingness to shoot Russian planes out of the sky. Do you understand that concern? What do you mean to shoot down Russian planes? If the missile is flying, yesterday, for example, the missile hit the university in the city of Kharkiv and the dormitory, and the same uh, missile uh, hit the tumor uh, pediatric clinic um, in Kyiv. So if this missile is flying, so are you thinking whether to shoot it down or not? I think there is no any other answer but to yes, yes, they should need to be shot down. You have to preserve, preserve lives. I'm sure that the brave uh, American soldiers who would be shooting it down, knowing that it is flying towards the students, I'm sure that they had no doubt in doing so. Mr. President, I know that no one questions the horror unfolding in Ukraine right now. What the president has said here, uh, and lawmakers really in both parties, Republicans and Democrats, have stood behind the president on this. The concern about uh, protecting and enforcing a no-fly zone over Ukraine would then lead to the possibility it would draw the U.S. into a wider war with Russia, that they're simply not willing to do that. We are a place in Europe, a place of freedom, a zone of freedom. And uh, um, everyone thinks that we are far away from America or Canada. Uh, no, we are this zone of freedom. And when the limits of uh, rights and freedoms are being violated and stepped on, then you have to protect us because we will come first, you will come second, because the more this beast will eat, he wants more, more and more. Mr. President, you talked about the need for fighter jets. We know the U.S. is uh, reportedly looking at how to supply Russian uh, jets from Poland. Uh, you, had, you had requested these jets because Ukrainian fighter pilots know how to fly these Russian planes. Has there been any movement on that front? We asked not only the United States, we asked many other countries. I'm not going to name them. We looked into this question. We know where these Soviet planes are stationed, which uh, countries host them. And we asked these countries. And in many ways, it is the United States in many ways who will decide. Do you believe the president could be doing more to help? 
I'm sure that the president can do more. I'm sure he can, and I would like to believe that, that he's capable of doing that. The U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, said just in the last uh, 24 hours that the U.S. is looking uh, at credible reports that civilians have been intentionally targeted there uh, in Ukraine, saying if so, it would be a war crime. We, of course, have seen these horrific images uh, in these last few hours. Do you believe that Putin is deliberately attacking civilians? Why, why would I care? The result is the same. People are dying. The bombardment of the schools and kindergartens, the universities, the dormitory, the bombardment of uh, a nuclear power plant without even thinking that Europe may disappear if it really hits the unit. Every minute, every hour, every day, the same things are happening. People are dying. Do you believe Putin is a war criminal? I think that all people who came to our land, all people who gave those orders, all uh, soldiers who were shooting, they are all war criminals. Let me ask you, Mr. President, it's believed the U.S. and the West have offered help to get you out of that country alive if it comes to that. Have they made that offer? And how long will you stay? Yes, I was offered because there was a lot of information and uh, several special, uh, special groups who were sent to uh, kill me and uh, my family. I said no, because how can I do this? I'm the citizen of my uh, country and uh, I'm the um, elected president of these people. So you will stay until the end, no matter what that means? Well, I would like the end to be like in the Hollywood movies, the happy end.